Yo, yo, I'm Mixed Mars and Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be working on a, um, an Atco 14-inch deluxe cylinder mower. Um, I picked up Josh's um, girlfriend, Millie, my future daughter-in-law, um, found it for sale in her local town, told me about it. It says Atco cylinder mower for sale uh, with scarifier. So I was under the assumption it was an Atco bound mower because it had a scarifier. However, when I turned up, uh, this little old boy turned up with this old 14-inch deluxe with a Atco bound mower. Brand new, in a box, never been used, Scarifier. So I thought, hmm, that's not what I thought it was. But hey ho, I thought I'd have a Scarifier anyway because uh, I, I can always use them for my cylinder mowers. And uh, I thought, well, I'd pick along the old little Deluxe and just try and get it to run. He said it does come with a spare engine. He has heard the engine run before, but it no longer runs, wants a bit of work. So I thought, great little content for the channel. If you've got a little tiny Deluxe cylinder mower that doesn't run, then this could be the video for you. So that's cool, before we get on, um, Got some bits off my Amazon wishes. Yes, for those of you who don't know, I have an Amazon wishes. I don't talk about it. Um, but um, if you want to um, send me a little parcel or something, if, if I helped you out with your lawnmower fix, and whatever, save a bit of cash, and you want to send a bit of appreciation going back towards me, then feel free to do so. No pressure. But my man Richie Turner um, on Instagram, I helped him source a load of spare parts, um, service parts for his um, scarifier, I think. And um, he messaged me to say, can I send some bits? It's up to you, mate. You do what you want to do. And he has. He sent me this big bag, big bag, full of brushing, polishing um, discs for like your little tiny uh, multi-tools and what have you. Um, so thank you very much for that. But I didn't stop him. He didn't stop there. He then went forward and bought five tins of Pocket Morocket. Now, I love Pocket Morocket. It's really, really good stuff. Um, so there's five tins of Pocket Rocket there. Now, Pocket Rocket is very similar to your GT85. Now, the reason I like Pocket Rocket is because it's got super duper um, spraying performance. So let me just put that cap back on because that, that, that just fell off and get it on there. I don't want to go on there. Two seconds, guys. That's it, right, on. So what I like about the Pocket Rocket is, is that when you put your straw in, you look at this, compared to like your WD-40. I've got your WD-40, yeah, right. So just in comparison, WD-40 in a tin, ready? Yeah, like right. that. Pocket rocket, brilliant. It is brilliant stuff. And it's like GC85, it's, it's the same, same sort of stuff. So yeah, if you're, you wanna get hold of some good cleaner for carburetors and what have you, then pocket rocket is the way to go. So if you just say to your wife, darling, come on please have a pocket rocket, you might get someone else as well. Um, so there you go. So uh, my mate Richie Turner bought me three tins, or uh, five tins of Pocket Rocket and some and some um, some little tiny cleaners. And also, someone bought me off my hands of wishes also another lot, which is great. Another box of GT85. No pass, no, no message about on there. So that was you. A second lot's turned up of GT85. I love my GT85. I've just got tins and tins and tins and tins of it. So I use a lot of it though. So that's cool. And then I have one more parcel turn up. This is from a bloke called Ian. Now, Ian was selling a, a brand spanking new uh, Allet Sterling, uh, but due to health reasons, um, he had to sell it on. He, he didn't even use it, it's brand new. So I managed to get it sold to a fella in, I think he was Portsmouth way, uh, done the deal for them, whatever, and that's all good. And uh, since then, Ian's been texting me, messaging me, because he wants a bit of help, bits and pieces, service parts and advice. So I've been, I've been messaging him as well, and he sent me over, look at these, look at these spandanglies, these are Sealy's. Coloured uh, sockets, half inch um, sockets. Um, they're nice, I like them. Uh, from 13 mil, no misses, all the way up to what's that one there? Probably about nine, uh, probably about 20s. 23. Look at that. They're nice. So they're going in my box of many things. So I like them. So cheers, Ian. Much appreciated. So today we're going to be doing the um, a little 14 inch um, deluxe, a super deluxe or something deluxe uh, at Co. About 1972, 78, somewhere in there, uh, with a Suffolk Iron Foundry engine on it. As I say, it says it, he says it, it's, it all used to run, but we shall see. I don't know. So we need to get out the lawn, quick look at it first, see what it's doing, and then um, bring it indoors, tie the bench down, and then we'll start to get the work on it so we can get that up to run. So if you've got a tiny vintage lawnmower um, that needs uh, a bit of TLC because it's not running, then this could be the video for you. If this is the first time you want to mix mother, mother, man, hit the subscribe button, mark the old bell, send notifications to all. That way you'll be talking to someone up on a video. So without further ado, let's get down dirty, let's go out on the lawn and look at this little tiny Atco Deluxe 14 inch and try and get it to run.
right, so on the lawn is this little tiny Atco uh, Deluxe uh, B14. That's what it is. With the Suffolk Iron Foundry engine on top. Now, I don't know anything about this at all. I don't know if it runs. It doesn't look like it's run for a very, very long time. Spark plug was a little bit loose. Let's just check out the old spark plug. Looks really good. Bit of pocket rocket. Daniel. Spark plug back in. Looks like it's had the head done by the looks of it. We're going to nick that up. HT leave back on. Give it a pull, see what happens. Now it might all just go wrong on me. I've got a grass box full of spare parts here too. Pull cord looks like it's about to snap anyway. Oh, I think it doesn't pull on it. I don't think we've even got a spark at the moment. All right, let me get my spark checker. I don't think we're even getting a spark. The pull cord, I can barely pull it. So I'm gonna to need to adjust, uh, uh, to look at the pull cord first. Let me just grab my, my fan dangled spark checker, of which um, my very good friend, Hank, from Henry Mawarski, the Big Dog Repair YouTube channel, who's over 700 subscribers now. I'm trying to get much to a thousand, so go and check out my mate Hank. Henry Mawarski, Big Dog Repair. I'll try and leave a photograph of his channel at the top there. Right, let's put that on. And let's see if we're actually getting a spark or not. No spark. Right, so we're not getting a spark, so we can't do anything because we're getting no spark on the indicator. So that means we've got a spark issue. Let's get up on the bench, get the pull cord sorted, check out the reason why we haven't got a spark, sort the handle out, sort the throttle out. It's a bit of a mess, but I'm sure we can get it sorted. Um, it's got a spare front roller in there too, because this roller's had it. Um, and it comes with, comes with an abundance of bits and bobs in here. What's that? More spare rollers. Uh, Front roller, uh, looks like we've got a clutch there. Uh, spare carburetor, yeah, spare Zenith carburetor there. Got loads of bits. Right, let's get up on the bench, quick little look, see what we can and can't do, and we'll go from there. Right, so ready to make a start. So first thing to do is just pull cord, as you see, it's absolutely knackered, and we've got and we're getting no spark. So I'm going to remove the pull cord. Now, I have actually got a spare pull cord that comes with this pull cord assembly. Um, but I'd rather just get this one working for now because it does, doesn't seem to be slipping. Now these do suffer with a little bit of slippage um, due to wear and tear. Now it's got a Delorto carb on it. They do also come with a Zenith. So I have got a spare Zenith here which come with it and some spare coils. So I'm hoping that we can get the pull cord working and then um, possibly... Um, have a look at the uh, the spark system, whether it's a points need doing or uh, if it's been converted over to like a solid state ignition. I don't know. No idea. We won't know until we get into it. But let's just start with just removing this pull cord assembly, which is coming off slowly. Got one or two washers here. That's one washer. Another one there. Right, don't lose no bits. And then do all I want to do first off is just, just renew uh, this pull cord. All you've got to do now literally is just take this pull cord apart because you can't actually access it from inside here. You have to do it from uh, with it taken apart. So it does involve um, taking these bits and bobs out, take this split pin out, remove that. Um, always pays to have it uncoiled as far as it will go and then just cut the string before you take this out because there's a spring inside there, you don't want to upset the spring. So make sure it's not under no, under no tension. So I'm just going to cut this off like so. Let that fully wind in. 
and then get a pair of long nose or short nose pliers, whichever is easiest, and just start to uh, take this apart. Now, take photographs, guys and girls, because it's been a while since I've worked on one. And I'm a mate, Lord Murray Jones, he works on loads of these. He's a vintage boy. Just going to start to manipulate all this out so that we can get underneath here and start to um, take this apart. So just a bit of fiddling, whilst we just get this, um, this split pin out, which has been in there for quite a while, and it looks like it doesn't now want to come out, but it will, there it goes, it's coming. I was trying to rush for the camera, of course. All right, so keep hold of it. Split pin out, put it down on one side. There'll be a little spring on there, so split pin. And then you've got a little tiny washer up on there. Don't lose that. There's your dogs. And now you should be able to just remove this bit here and the springs inside. See what I did there, see? And if you do it under tension, then what happens is, is you, um, the spring will jump out and bite you. Okay, so just gonna unravel that now. And around the other side, keep holding your two dogs. Around the other side is there is the, um, the pull cord that we're gonna take out. Which is there, just get a hold of that. And then I'm gonna thread a new piece of pull cord in. Let me get that bit done and I'll come back to you and then we just reinsert that all so we know exactly what's going on. That's quite a fair old thick bit of pull cord in there too. There it goes. So just remember where bits and bobs go. If in doubt, take photographs. That's what I do, gents, right, ladies and gents. You, you think that, you know, I'll mix mowers, knows it all, well, I don't. So what I do, I, I just take photographs so I know exactly what's going on, where bits and pieces go. I'm gonna put in 3.5 bit of rope. I use rockwood. So all I'm gonna do is just take a, take a good selection of length of rope out. And I'm gonna cut a piece off. And I've got a little tiny blow torch down here somewhere. My map gas, which is great for burning eyebrows. Ask my mate Ken at Ken Small Engine to tell me about it. Burn that off. Give that a little tiny point up. Upside down again. Gonna run that through the hole. If you want to go through there, go through that side. Get a tiny twist. And then just pick that piece up. Bend it up right. And get hold of it. And then just tie a knot in that for now. And then we're just gonna pull that back in a minute. So tie a knot in it. Right down the bottom, nice and tight. Flip it back over, pull your cord, and tuck all your bits in so there's no so there's no bits poking out. Tuck all your bits in, and so it can't catch on anything else. Just like that. Then what you can do is get your blowtorch very quickly and just, just burn that just a touch. Just to just burn that off just a bit, just so it gets rid of any frayed edges. Just inside there, like just like that, okay. Back over it goes, close your dogs up. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna put our little tiny plate back over top of two lugs. Like so, we're gonna bring our pull cord back in. Now, all you gotta do is just line up, there's a little tiny um, hook system here that's gotta sit inside the spring. So we gotta so got do, so I'm gonna sit that down. It will go down once it all lines up. Get it all into place. And all you've got to do is just got to locate uh, that spring. Just get a little bit of a wiggle and you'll feel it drop and it just catch. I think we're about there. It's got to go down just a touch more yet. It's not. It's just not quite there. So it's going to have a quick locate of where it is. Once you come back, it feels to be about there. Once it's dropped down enough, what will happen is this this pin will then give you enough scope to put the whole put the um, put your, um, your split pin back in. So if it's not quite down enough. You need to come back off and just work it so you actually feel that that, that spring piece is actually in. So you can go all the way back here with it and then swing it round till it's got it. I think that's got it there. It felt better. That piece goes back on top. Yeah, it's got it. And then, literally, you've got to put your, your split pin back in there. So I can't do it with two hands, with, with one hand here. So let me put a split pin back in, and then uh, I'll show you how to wind it.
Right, with your little tiny split pin now in place, I just want to get some WD-40, some penetrating fluid, bits and pieces, just to lube this um, coil up, because um, it's been sat for a little while, and I want it to run really, really nice. So to make sure your dogs are loose, and they, and they retract as they should do, which is nice to see, and then just start to wind it. This is the beauty of some of these, these older systems, is you just have to just wind it up. And you wind it up to a point where you believe the resistance is strong enough to put it all the way back. And it's around about six turns on, mo on most bits of kit. But you'll feel it. You'll feel it when the, it says to you, the spring will say to you, no more, or I'm going to break. You'll feel it. We're getting there now. Right, 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 so that's saying to me, no more, or I'm going to break. Now, as you can see, I'm nearly there. So that'll do us. I'm now going to put the other end in through there. Feed that round, so that all goes in, and then when you release it nice and gently, keep all that bit of string. Oh, I nearly lost it then, see how I span it? Nearly lost it. And, you want, and what you want it to be, you don't want it like, like that, because it's gonna come off the spool. So you want it to come off, so there's just enough just to keep, on, keep inside there. So I'm gonna cut that off now. In fact, I'm just going to tie a quick little knot in there, just to hold it. Just to hold it in place, okay, so I can put it, so I can put it down. And then I've got to locate my, my pull cord, here it is here, um, housing, handle even. Cut all this old stuff off. Oh. So now, I can come back, I'm just going to take under that knot, now these pull core systems on here, they're, they're a little bit renowned for sticking, slipping and what have you, but don't forget, they are knocking on. This is 1970s, this, is a, this mower is as old as me, so we're talking 45, 46 years old, potentially nearly 50 years old. Under that little tiny knot, I'm just going to burn the end of that bit of string, just so I can put a decent point on it, without burning my fingies. And then, literally just going to thread, thread, who's thread? Thread that throat. All the way through there, let it go. Sure, it will go. I'm gonna make it go and grab hold of that. Pull it through. Pull it all the way through till I, I get the cord where I want it. I don't forget what I said to you. You don't want it so that the cord is overhanging on the spool. So that do it no favours at all if it's there. Okay, see how, it, how it's overloaded? You want it to be about there. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the handle back. I'm gonna tie my knot there. I'm gonna put a double mix mowers in there. Now this is saying um, electronic ignition, which means solid state on here, but it's not, that's not to say it has. It could just be a different type of, oh, um, uh, cover's been put on here. So I just want to take the pull cord cover off now, the, the shroud off, just to see inside, see whether we've got a set of points in there or whether we've got a coil in there, one or the other, but it could be coil, we'll see. Burn the end of that off, quite happy with that. So now we have a, a fully working, non-sticking pull cord, which is doing what it should do. It's, fr it's throwing out the dogs as it should do. And the only problem I can see is that's why that's frayed before. See that little tiny nick just in there? That's frayed before. So we need to make sure that when you put this on, you might have to just turn that little tiny collar around a touch or, or put a file in there because it's starting to fray the, um, the cord. Let's just put it there. And that should be okay where it's going to go there, but it may just catch down here. That's why the other cord was all frayed. So um, you can put a, a bit of JB weld in there just to just to make it a bit more bit more smoother. But that's a that's one of the hazards. Right. Next thing to do, I'm going to I'm waffling. I'm going to remove the two bolts, one down here, one over here, two up the top, and I'm going to remove this uh, this whole shroud off the front of the machine. So go and do those four, and I'll come back to you once I've done so. Okay. So what I've done is I just put the um, the pull cord back on because. Although I had no spark, I could I could very very hardly pull the machine over as it was. So um, before we start taking the shroud off, because this is saying it's got electronic ignition, which means it's got a coil in there and not a set of points. However, you need to check because sometimes people just put these pull cord covers on and actually they have got a set of points and what have you. So always double check first. Um, but I have taken the um, 
the cover off as you know could look inside and normally it'll tell you what the points are set at but um this has actually got um solid state condition so i've got my my cool tester i'm gonna put that on and it's showing a little tiny red light just there let me give it a decent pull because now i can actually pull the blinking thing whereas before um i couldn't so now what i'm looking for is to pull the cord and hopefully we get a, a light come on up there uh, nothing there yeah and no, it says it says that the um spark is too high but that does mean we've actually got a spark coming on which is good it's not a brilliant spark i must admit yeah now we have got a spark so there is something happening so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the spark plug and I'm gonna clean the spark plug up or try and change it for something that's a bit more reliable maybe. Uh, what we got in there, it's quite a big old plug to be fair. It, a B2LM which will fit that, I think. We should see. It looks to be about the same sort of size. I'm just gonna double check the gap size of that and uh, I'll come back to you. Right. So I've got to, uh, I tried putting on the, uh, I had another set of rollers, but they're plastic rollers, but they don't fit. So I've got to try and get um, some rollers made if it runs. So rule number one, with any old lawnmower, you need an oily rag, simple as. I have put petrol in it and I have checked the oil. Oil is as black as your hat, but there is oil in it. Um, doesn't seem to be any leaks coming from the carb at the moment, so that's good. So underneath the carb, you're gonna have a little tiny, like a twiddler which you, which you bring down fuel out of the tank and that is that is running lovely so that's good i'll put it onto the choke which is all the way over to the left hand side of the machine <coughs> i bought some carburetor spray just maybe just to help it a uh, bit of throttle so that's going to be throttle is going to be that way tension on the spring i think so the, the drive is uh that's free to roll so it should be somewhere about there Right, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh, oh. So because I've only got one roller on it, I'm a bit careful really. <laughs> so, oily ragging hand, I'm gonna engage this cylinder and, in, and pull the drive in, so that, that will just engage the drive of the cylinder only. Then engage the drive nice and gently. doesn't raise your pulse nothing will um, when you're controlling one of these old machines they're not like your standard machine you know some, something like the ego battery power for instance you just turn it on and away you go right or something similar with these you've got to think what you're doing 
because you've got the cylinder to engage and disengage. You've got yourself propelled to engage and disengage. And you've got to do that whilst hanging on to this machine, which is rattling and what have you. There, I'm, I've got to admit, and Lawnmower Jones is going to kick me straight in, in the you-know-what, I'm not a fan of a Suffolk myself. I just, I just don't, I don't appreciate the engine for what it is. I much prefer like the F12 Sloper. To me, it's just a much better engine. Um, sounds better and all the rest of it. But Suffolk's have got their little place in my heart. Um, they're, they're reliable, uh, without a doubt. They just sound like you've got a big bag of nails and you're just shaking them. But that's just me, right? So if you disagree with me, leave in the comment section, call me a name, that's fine. But I am entitled to my own opinion. But anyway, going back to it, we bought this lawnmower off of an old gentleman uh, who said the engine run and um, fortunately uh, he was right. The carburetor didn't even need to clean. Uh, it, it was suffering from a bad pull cord, that's what it needed. Um, the cord is fine. And actually I've done nothing else to this machine other than just repair the pull cord and put some fuel inside the carby and uh, away it's gone. So it does want a new roller, but if someone was to invest in this, uh, leave it as is, I won't worry about painting it all up, but put a new roller on it, they could have themselves a tidy little piece of history. Because it is quite cool. It's got an oil leak. Get my throttle. Or is it that way? It's that way. What is there not to love about it, I suppose? It's just gnarly, they're just, they're just shaking. They're just gnarly. You don't need kids or dogs near it, I tell you. So you've got to pull this handle in, and that will disengage the self propel so that when you cut the cylinder in, it's effectively it's a push mower. Cut your cylinder in, and then you can let go of your, your self propel. Now, unfortunately, I can't I can't bring it down to um, cutting the grass. It's only got one roller and it'll tip over, so I don't want to, I don't want to do that. But there you go, ticking over. Suffolk engine, Iron Foundry, 1970s. It is kind of nice, I must admit. But I've got so much stuff to get on with, so I cannot be sitting around here looking at a Suffolk um, Atco Deluxe 14B. Um, I've got other stuff to do. So don't forget, you will need your oily rag because you can't be doing um, vintage lawnmowers without an oily rag hanging out the back of your trousers. You've got to, it's for law, so you've got to have one. So there you go. Quick little video for you of Mixed Mowers and Mower Man on picking up a little tiny hip hip picking up a little tiny uh, Atco um, Deluxe 14B, and all it wanted was a little tiny pull cord. So I'm happy with that. It means I'm going to work too hard. Um, this way, all the way back, they leak petrol, they leak oil. That's just what they do. Um, you know, they, they are quite an old machine. Um, there you go. So if you like this video, Mix Mother and Man, hit your subscribe button, whack the old bell, set the notifications to all. That way you'll tell us I'm up on the video. And I look forward to you guys next time, Mix Mother's very, very soon. But don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.